of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you to lift up your hands and begin to bless his name this morning. Just lift up your hands and exalt him this morning. Begin to thank him.
praise the Lord. We will call our Father in the Lord. Are you in the house? Are you sure you're in the house? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Baba, here in your presence. I told you, right? You can't go with my voice right now. I lost my voice for some months. Let it rain. Cause your rain. Let, Let it fall on me. We are in.
Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Please be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. Welcome all of you. Amen. Amen. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, please, let, uh, please move my bag and the bag and let the man of God and the first lady come and sit there, please. Dr. Suma and first lady, please come and sit at the front. We are blessed. We are honored to have you. Yeah, we, the, the, you, you have to. Right here. Take my phone from there. Let them sit on my seat. Amen. Yes. Please. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, it's a blessing to have them in the house. Amen. Uh, among other things, to have this man in this house is a, is a blessing. We're so honored that you're here, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, are you in the house? Amen. amen. Yeah. I want to hear believers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Well, we have a packed day, so I'm going to go straight to uh, my assignment. Uh, last week, we began talking about stewardship, right? We began talking about stewardship. Uh, I just, by way of introduction, I just want to do a little recap. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we established the fact that stewardship means, and please, if you can, we must like, stewardship means utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and for the betterment of his creation. Hallelujah. That is by Charles Bagg uh, from the Holman Bible Dictionary. Utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of his creation. Hallelujah. Very important that we get that. Amen. Very important that we get that. Okay. And then we also establish the fact that the reason why we need to understand stewardship is there is a need to understand the biblical concept and our roles as stewards because we will have to give an account for what we do with what God has given us. Hallelujah. We will have to give an account. Hallelujah. Everything you have, you have to give an account for it. Amen. Oh, are we, are we here? Oh, I'm scaring you. You will have to give an account for everything you have. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2, that moreover, it is required of stewards that one is found faithful. So among other things, being faithful is a necessity, is a requirement of, as a steward. Amen. Amen. And we looked at personal stewardship, and I define personal stewardship as me be responsible for managing and caring for the resources given to me by God. And that is, or that includes, the money I have or will have. The time I have or will have. And I use the word will have because some of us are not, we don't have our millions yet. So it's what we have now and what we will have. And the time we have and the time we will have. And the talents I have. And then the relationships I have. Listen, brothers and sisters, let me just say this to us, okay? You have to come to that place where you ask yourself, all these wonderful relationships I have, why do I have them? Why did God bring this, all these wonderful people my way? And this is something you have to answer for yourself because I believe with all my heart that people are in our life for a reason. Hallelujah. You see, uh, the late Dr. Miles Moreau said that when you don't know the purpose of something, you abuse it. So when we don't know why there are some relationships in our lives, we abuse them. We abuse, in fact, we abuse everything we have. But I want to challenge you and I want to encourage you at the same time. Be, be, be careful with what you have and make sure you manage what God has given you. And I said that that involves making wise decisions, setting priorities, and using resources effectively to achieve personal goals and also, and while also considering the impact on myself and other people. Hallelujah. So, uh, very important. I want to, today I want to speak about the stewardship of our time. That we are stewards of our time. T-I-M-E. I told you last week I'll be back, right? Oh, did I tell you that? I told you I'll be back, so I'm back. Stewardship of our time. My text is uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 through 10, and I'm reading the Amplified Version, and he's going to project that for us, uh, the Amplified Version. Paul says that, therefore, whether we are at home on earth or away from home and with him, it is our constant ambition to be pleasing to him. For we believers will be called to account and must all appear 
before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be repaid for what has been done in the body, whether good or bad. That is, each will be held responsible for his actions, his purposes, his goals, his motives, and the use or misuse of his time, opportunities, and abilities. Blessed Holy Spirit, speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name, scratch us where we need it. Let the word bypass our head into our hearts. The Bible says that your word I have hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. May your word come into our hearts today. In the name of Jesus Christ, as for me, I pray that you will use me as a pen of a skillful writer to inscribe your word upon the tablets of our hearts. I ask for clarity of thought. I pray for precision of speech. And I ask that you will grant me, my God, revelation this morning as I speak. Let revelation knowledge be unhindered in this place today in Jesus' name. Above all, let Jesus be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the things I said last week, I said to be effective stewards, number one, we have to be knowledgeable. Number two, we have to be, we, there must be self-awareness, right? I said there must be quality decision making. We have to make quality decisions. Listen, brothers and sisters, as we sit here, where you are in life are as a result of all the decisions you made to date. And where you are, if you are not happy with where you are, the next level you want to go to, it will take your decisions to get you there. Hallelujah. So we must learn to make quality decisions. Amen. And we said we must also learn to manage our resources wisely. And we must build meaningful relationships and be example to others. And today I want to focus on managing resources effectively by focusing on the stewardship of our time. In the verse number 10 of the text we read, Paul said, For we believers will be called to account and must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be repaid for what, he has, for what has been done in the body, whether good or bad. That is, each will be held responsible for his actions, his purposes, his goals, his motives, and the use or misuse of his time, opportunities, and abilities. Hallelujah. For the sake of uh, what uh, our packed program, I'm just going to go straight to the, my points today. Hallelujah. Number one, please, I want to let all of us understand. I know there, there's a saying we all hear, right? Uh, I, I need to learn to manage my time wisely. Please, let me submit to you, you don't manage time. Nobody can manage time. I don't know who can stretch 24 hours and make it 25 hours. I don't know who can turn 24 hours into 24.5 hours. There's only going to be only 24 hours in a day. Hallelujah. None of us can do that. There's only, the only issue is we have to learn to manage ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to do what? Learn to manage ourselves. I have to, so I, I think maybe when people are talking about time management, what they are really saying is that I need to manage myself better within the 24 hours God has given me. But you can't strike 24 hours to make it 25. Am I communicating? Very important that we get this. And the outcome of my life will be determined by what I do with my 24 hours. Please make sure you go by what I say. You don't go ahead of me. On the, on the, yes, very important. Because I'll lose my train of thought. All right? So you've seen that already, right? The law of compound effect. The law of compound effect says that the outcome of my life is based on my, my movement by movement choices. Brothers and sisters, let me just say this to all of us, okay? God is a loving God. God is a merciful God. God is a good God. He loves all of us. But I also want to say this to you, that God doesn't waste time. And let me just submit to you. I think I've said it to you guys before, right? I did a series here when we started Oasis about the blessing. And I, one of the things I said is that the worst thing that can happen to you is to be blessed and not know it. And one of the things every one of us need to understand is that God has blessed you with time. As you sit here, what you are doing with your time is what matters. Hallelujah. And so the law of compound effect says that my moment by moment actions and choices, I told you that way they write, my actions, my decisions, and my choices will form, it will be the content of my life. And as I said at the beginning, if you don't like where the ship is headed, you can stop and redirect by your decisions. 
Hallelujah. So if everything about my life so far is not pleasant, I can do something about it. That's the goodness of our God. Hallelujah. So very important that we understand that. So please, you do not, you can't manage time. Don't forget that. You can't manage time. You manage yourself. We know service starts at 9.30 a.m. here, right? Even if there's one of us, we start a worship. So we just manage ourselves. We make sure we are here, the place is ready, and 9.30 we take off. We don't try to say, okay, let me see if I can stretch uh, between 9 to 9.30. You can't. It's impossible. So please, number one, you don't manage time. You manage yourself. And as a resource God has given to you, how you, you, how you utilize that resource is very important because as the text said, you will stand before Jesus and you will give an account to what you did with the time. And for the young people sitting here, let me just say this to you. Sometimes we think, I used to think I had time, you know. Until one day I woke up and I realized that, oh no. <laughs> one of these kids, the other day I was, I was doing a text and I saw, how, is your, how was your day great? And I said, how, what are you up to? And then she texted me back, HW. So I'm thinking to myself, well, what is HW? So I text back, I said, what is HW? And then she texts, homework, grandpa. And she's calling me grandpa. And I'm thinking I'm young. But already, <laughs> she's calling me grandpa. I'm like, oh, that's how she sees me. Me, <laughs> Please, time goes so fast, you have no idea. We are in April. Right? We only just started the year yesterday. We're in April. Please, your time, how you manage your time, how you manage yourself within the context of your time matters. Use it wisely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Use it what? Wisely. With, you know, one of the things we said that I have enough time. I have time. Please let me submit to you. You don't have time. Anything you need to do, do it now. You don't have time. Hallelujah. We don't what? We don't have time. Let me just give you some facts about time. Number one, time is free, but once you lose it, you can never recover it. By the time you woke up this morning, by the time you jump out of your bed, God has packaged 24 hours waiting for you. You and I, all of us. But every hour, every second, every nanosecond, you lose, you lose for whatever reason, you will never recover it. Hallelujah. You will never walk. Recovery. There, there was a, there's a, a research somebody did. I, I don't have it to read it to you. But they said that if you live to be 75 years and you sleep and you die and you sleep 8 hours a day, it's like you spend about 23 years of your life sleeping. I will look for it and I'll come back. Hallelujah. But think about it. 23 years of your life sleeping. And they said we spent about 3 and a half years shopping. That, that, that really got me thinking. <laughs> Three and a half years we spent shopping. For those of you who go to the shop and you have to look at the seams and things like that. I'm sure yours is more than some of us. <laughs> Don't forget that. Please, time is free, but once you lose it, you can never recover it. Time is a rare commodity. Treat time with care and respect time. Please, respect time. You know, some of these things, when I said them right, Paul, one time Paul was writing to the church, Paul said, I think it was Peter who said, what we have seen, or John actually, said what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have handled is what we give to you. Some of the things I'm telling you, as I stand here, I think the, a couple of weeks ago I told you, right, that every now and then I wish I was that young teenager in my parents' house. Yeah. You know, I was talking to my sister here, uh, my daughter, my sister, whichever. And I know she won't mind me saying this, but I was with Kaya recently and we're having some conversation. I said, Kaya, your age now, write a letter to, uh, from yourself, your 30 year old self, write a letter to your 20 something year old self now. And whatever you know, when you are 30 years from now, anything you think you might regret or anything you want to accomplish, write your 23 something year old self now. And tell your 23 year old to make sure that by the time you turn 30, your 30 year old can enjoy life. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Write, those of you who are young here, write a letter to your older self. Like maybe I'm 20. If I turn 40, what would I want to accomplish? Let your 40 year old self write a letter to your 20 year old self and tell your 20 year old self how to live life so that by the time you hit 40, life will be exactly what you want it to be. 
So you don't hit 40 and then you, you, know, you begin to live in a land of regrets. Hallelujah. This is serious, brothers and sisters. Respect time. Hallelujah. Respect time. And please, let me just say this to all of us. Time doesn't wait for you to figure out what you want to do with your life before it begins to tick. Time doesn't wait for you to, oh, let me figure out what I want to do with my life and then time begins. No. The day you were born, time began to tick for you. We're about to dedicate this young man here. The day he landed on planet Earth, the clock began to tick for him. And the clock is ticking for all of us sitting here. When you have time, right, Google yourself and say, if I live to be 85 years old and I eat three square meals a day, how many years of my life did I spend eating? Google will tell you that. Or chat GPT will tell you that. They will give you answers. So you know what is at stake. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, it's a big deal. The difference between two people is how they use their time. The Bible said that the rich and the poor have one thing in common. Their maker is the same. God made them both. But what they do with their time is what differentiates what becomes of them. And please, don't confuse outcomes with equal opportunity. We are given equal opportunity, but we are not given equal outcome. God gives everybody equal opportunity. The rich man, the poor man, everybody has 24 hours. But the difference is what the rich man does with his time. As we sit here, those who have investments... Every hour, the investment is yielding something. Whether they are sleeping or awake, the investment is yielding. For some of us, when we go to bed, the earning ceases until you wake up. The same 24 hours is all about the how. Hallelujah. So God has blessed us with time as an investment. What we do with it is our return on that investment. Somebody said that, who you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. <laughs> so to be an effective steward of time, because that's what it's all about. Right? To be an effective steward of time, number one, we must recognize the power of routine and use it to our advantage. This thing called routine, that you, these young people today call it boring. Routine, the power of routine. Recognize the power of routine. You have to build some routines into your life. Every successful person I know, every successful person I read about, those of us who have, you know, of course, success is relative, right? For the person in college, success may be graduating. Not just graduate, but graduate to some decent grades, right? Those of us who can attest to those type of success, we will tell you that there were routines in our lives. So recognize the power of routine and use it to your advantage. Routine allows us to use our time effectively. Hallelujah. You know, uh, this Christian author, a Christian leadership expert, John Maxwell, one of my mentors, you know, distance mentors, uh, he said that the secret to your success is determined by your daily agenda. Let me ask you a question. What is on your daily agenda? When you get up every day, what are your non-negotiables? What are the things that when you get up in the morning, no matter what? Some time ago, I went to, I traveled to Ghana, where I come from, West Africa. And I was talking to my cousin. And I said to him, listen, this is the way things are, where we live. And I said, I can give you, I, I, I said, I can give you my, my calendar. If you, whenever you arrive in the state I live in, depending on the time, I can show you where you find me. I said, if you show up at 7 a.m., those days I used to get my hair cut at 7 a.m., Fridays. I said, if you show up at 7 a.m., I guarantee you will find me at the barber shop on a Friday. <laughs> you know, we used to go to the barber shop. These days, you don't need to go to the barber shop. The hair itself is coming out. <laughs> the hair says, don't go anymore. I'll come out. But, please, I'm not standing here to tell you that I've, I've, got, it, I've got it all made. Like Paul said, right? I don't consider myself to have laid hold of. But one thing I do, I press. So brothers and sisters, you, we must give an account for the time. I want to make sure you understand that and you get that. You will give an account for your use of time. You will give an account to God what you did with the time he has given to you. You will give an account for all the things that are available to you because you live in America. By virtue of where you live, 
you have rich of, to over 70% of the world by virtue of the country you live in. You have rich over 70% of the world population. What are you doing with that? You know, those of you who are here who have never traveled, one thing I desire for you is that you travel because tra what travel does is it exposes you to things. You either come back and appreciate what you have or you come back and you realize that you are not all that. But I pray that everybody got to travel, no matter where you go, but go outside of the United States. Sometimes, even going outside of the state you live in, you see different things in another state. I arrived in Arizona, their airport. I can't remember the name. As soon as I got, I said, ah, this place must be very big. Right at the airport, you can see the space. Three days later, they were voted the best airport in the country. I said, I knew it. Nana is here. When her mother came, the mother was here in church. After service, the first thing the mother said to me is that your state is very clean and neat. I'm like, oh, thank you. And she said, I come to the U.S. often. And she said, your airport. And she said to me, you, you can tell the state of, an, of a place when you arrive at the airport. She said, your airport. And she made some comparison. We're not going to talk about that. But she said, when I arrived at your airport, and I came out of the airport, I looked around. And I thought to myself, this is a, a clean city, a clean state. And she said, and when I came out, Everything confirmed what I thought. Go to some states. Where there's no smoking is, that's where somebody's smoking. We will give an account for all those things. You will give an account. Please, and you will give an account to God. <sighs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So, be careful. Effective stewards discover their one thing in life. If you want to recognize the power of routine, you have to learn to major in or what you need to major in. There are things that we all get involved in that are worthless, that waste our time, that waste our energy, that waste our resources. Some of us, you get up in the morning, you know that in the morning is when you are at your best. If you are at your best in the morning, all the things that you need to do, the most priority, the things that are most priorities, precious to you, or that has the highest priority in your life, get those things done in the morning because you know that you are at your best. If you don't know those things, please sit down and analyze yourself and figure it out when you are at your best. Your iPhone will tell you. Your iPhone or your iWatch or whatever will tell you when you are at your most productive. Yeah. Look into those things. Listen, I've discovered something about God. The things we consider as nothing, they mean more to God. The things we consider trivial, they mean more to God. <laughs> so discover your one thing in life. Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget everything that is behind me and I press on. One, Paul said, there's one thing I do. What is your one thing? If you don't have one, look for that. What is the one thing you know you must do? As a child of God, what, studying my Bible is not if I want to. More so as a preacher. Study my Bible is not if I want to. It's a necessity. What is your one thing? You know, it was shocking that they said that about 45% of graduates in America, man of God, from the day they graduated, they've never read another book. Since the day they graduated, they've never read a book. So how are you upgrading yourself? I was in a store not too long ago and I was having issues about my laptop. And I was telling them, and one of them asked me, well, how old is it? And I think he was trying to tell me that, sir, if the thing is more than two years old, you can't demand the thing you're asking us for. So after two years, your laptop is obsolete. You need to get a new one. How old is your laptop? <laughs> Don't tell me. But like I asked you last week, have you ever wondered why our phones do upgrades and things like that. And they said that the average, about 40 something percent of graduates, after graduation, don't read a single book. Whatever you knew five years ago is obsolete. That means that your relevance was five years ago. And I told you that when look for people who are relevant, if you are relevant, people will look for you. When you are not relevant, nobody cares. And you can't pray your word to be relevant. Prayer is good, but as you are praying, you are also doing. And Jesus wants all of us to be relevant. Hallelujah. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, Jesus wants us to be relevant. 
Hallelujah. Please discover your one thing. And determine that whatever it takes, this one. I am talking about the kind of thing that you don't let anybody come your way. Me. If anyone visits me and they stand for church, let's say Sunday or Bible study on Wednesday or prayer meeting on Friday, there is no way my guest will keep me busy from doing what is necessity. No way. You will not. No way. Mm -mm. Impossible. If you come under my roof, you do what I do. Or at best, you sit quietly and you watch. I'm trying to say to us, brothers and sisters, that there are things that must be non-negotiable in your life. What are your non-negotiables? Ask your neighbor, what are your non-negotiables? Ask your neighbor right now, ask the person next to you, what are your non-negotiables? I'm serious, ask them. What are your non-negotiables? <laughs> This is life. All right. Next one. Effective stewards develop their one thing. Oh, thank you. So you discover your one thing. You develop your one thing. I've learned that for the most part, everything God gives us is in a raw state, in a raw material form. They are in a raw form. And this is something, it's a, it's a principle we need, to, we need to have learned that from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Bible said that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God hovered. And God said, let there be light. Everything God gives you, it comes in a raw form. It is through your creativity that you make something out of that. And that's one of the lessons Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 gives us. That when God gives you something, he'll give you two in a raw form. God won't give you french fries made. He will give you potatoes. Or he will give you what it takes to make potatoes. Then you, out of your potatoes, can get your french fries. You understand what I'm saying? Some people won't turn into french fries. They'll turn into something else and eat, depending on where they come from in the world. But that's what God will give you. So those of you who are praying for God to give you soup, he won't give you soup. He will give you all the things that if you want soup, you can turn them into soup. That's why the use of your time matters. Because he has given you the time and that thing to do something with. Hallelujah. Listen, I want, to be, I want to make sure that, like I told you, right, I want to be a balanced preacher so that you are, you are healthy Christians growing in the Lord. Rather than come and stand here and tell you, turn around five times and your breakthroughs are coming and you go home and there are no breakthroughs and you are more dizzy than ever before and yet there are no breakthroughs because I'm telling you, turn around five times and you turn around five times and you didn't see anything and then you added two more turn arounds and nothing is happening because that's not the way of the world. That's not how God created things. Hallelujah. God will give you things in a raw form. You have to turn it around. Amen. Glory to God. So develop your one thing. And then the final one. Deploy it. I am trying to say to you that everything you need, those of you who aspire to be rich, everything you need to be rich begins with the time God has given you. Because for some of us, maybe that for the first couple of years, I'm going to use that time to go to school to learn something or to learn a trade, right? I'm going to use that time to do that and then after that, I'll move on to the other things I have to do. That, that, does it make sense what I'm saying? Please, that, does it make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, so the time use, how you use your time matters. Hallelujah. The time you said matters. It matters a lot. And I put here in my note that remember that we will give an account for what we did with the resources entrusted to us. Deploy your one thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me conclude by asking you a couple of questions. You know I like to do that. These are some questions I want us to reflect on. The first one is this. If you must give an account today on how you use your time. If Jesus is to say that your days on earth are done. Come home. I told you last week, you as a Christian, you, you are no, the judgment you stand before God is not whether you are saved or not. You are already saved. You know your end. But God is going to ask you, what did you do with the time I gave you? If God is to ask that question now, what would be the answer? That Lord, I'm sorry? Or Lord, forgive me? Or this is what I did? It will be forgive me, huh? May mercy abound. <laughs> Amen. Because we are repenting. 
But that's the first question. What's the second question, please? Okay. The second question is, if you are called upon to give an account for your time, oh, we already touched that. Okay, so the question I ask is, what changes must you, what changes, what must you change as you go from here today? Yeah. What must you change? When you stand before Jesus and he asks you, what did you do with the time? I will stand by his shoulders and say, yes, Lord, I teach that. I taught them that. I preach that message to them about the fact that they are effective. So, Lord, ask them the question. And I will listen to your answers. And you cannot say that, Lord, I didn't know. Because I'm standing here teaching you. This 14th day of April 2024, I will say, Lord, I stood there. I taught it. Yeah. I'm serious. I will tell him, yes, Lord, I taught that. Because if I didn't teach you, there's something called the principles of accountability. If I haven't taught you, I can't hold you accountable. But I'm teaching you. God, what? Well, not me. The Holy Spirit is teaching you. So God is holding you accountable. So the question is, what, must, what changes must you make? And I'm saying that because every word of God demands a corresponding action from us. So what must you change as you go away from here today? What will keep you from being an effective steward of your time? These are questions I want you to answer for yourself. So in your own Bible study, in your own morning devotion, these are questions you need to answer. In your prayer journal, what will keep me from being an effective steward of the time God has given me? Reels on Facebook, right? I'm not on the other one. The, uh, I was going to say IG, but it's IG, right? Yeah. So I don't know whether they have something like that on IG. But short videos on YouTube. Some of us, we get into those and we don't even realize the time. And before you know, it's six hours. And you know, they use these algorithms, right? So the more you are watching those things, the more, guess what? They push to you to watch. Uh -huh. Because the more you are watching, the more they make money. Yes. You know that, right? The more you are watching, the more they are making money. So they give you something to watch. They give you content to watch. And as you watch the content, they make money. Uh-huh. So you are making them richer. Whilst you are wasting your time. But every second you are on that thing watching, somebody is becoming richer. This is the reality. Now, I'm not faulting those people. They have used their creativity. They've used what God has given them. And out of that, they are making money. I'm not faulting them. I told you I'm going to be rich. So I have nothing against rich people. I don't care what you think. I have nothing against rich people. Because I'm going to be there. Yeah. But what will keep you from being an effective steward of your time? And then what are you going to do about it? So these are some four questions for your reflections. And I pray God that you take this as serious because what's at stake is what you stand before God to say. That's what's at stake. One. Number two, what's at stake is your future. And our habits are carving out a future for us that we are going to live in it. Whether you like it or not, you will live there. You will live in that future. So, the good thing is that from where you are now, you can do something about that future and decide that that future will be a quality uh, future. It can, it's possible. It is very possible. But it begins with how you manage your time now. Hallelujah. One area I invest my time is in the word of God. No time spent in the word is wasted. When you invest in the things of God, you are securing and procuring for yourself a better future. The Bible said that the word of God is able to build us up and to give us an inheritance among those who are sanctified. So investment in the word builds me up. Hallelujah. It builds you up. So Bible study, that one hour we spend on Bible study, that's an hour you are investing in the word of God to build you up. And our youth, on Thursday, that one hour, it is to build you up. You are investing your time in something. How I pray that we'll be more wiser with the rest of our time. Amen. Bible says in the book of Ephesians, Paul said that uh, be circumspective of the time for the days are short. 
Hallelujah. Please close your eyes. I want you to talk to God yourself. This is not the kind of message you hear and you wish somebody was here to listen to that. This is something that you needed to hear it. So I want you to talk to the Lord. And I want you to prayerfully consider these questions for reflection. Consider these questions for reflection. The Lord, help me. Blessed Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to be wiser in my use of my time. Your word says that if anybody lacks wisdom, they should ask for God. I ask for wisdom to use my time effectively and productively. That I can look back on my life. I can look back on my day, on my week, on my month, on my year, and say that I have used my time wisely. I desire that you be proud of me, Lord. I desire that my life will bring glory to you. So, Lord, help me. Blessed Holy Spirit, help me to make effective use of my time. Precious Holy Spirit, this is our prayer. This is our desire. This is our need. We ask for your enabling power to enable us to be effective stewards of our time from this day forward. May we use our time effectively and productively. I give you the glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Listen, those of you who listened to my message on boundaries, right, last year, I want to encourage you. Uh, go and listen to that message once again and make use of your time wisely. One thing I've learned about time is that somebody's always trying to use your time. If you don't use your time, somebody will use it. You know that, right? If you don't use your time, somebody will use it. Nana is here. I'm proud of her. Every time there's something I need to talk to her about and I'm by her. The first thing she does is she pulls her phone and she goes to her calendar. So it's like she's trying to schedule me on her calendar. She's scheduling her pastor on her calendar. But I, I respect that. What she's trying to say is that I don't have all the time. So what is not here, I'm not committed to it. Yeah. I pray for all of us. So me too, when you call me, I'll take my calendar. I want you to know that. And me too, I'll look. But for some of us, somebody, oh, dude, I, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Do you have a minute? Yes, I have a minute. No, I don't have a minute. Because whatever they want to ask you for, whatever they want you to do, it wasn't part of your plans when you got up in the morning. So instead, you can say something like, well, it depends. What are your thoughts? You think I'm crazy or you think I'm fine? I'm right. I'm serious. What do you think? I'm crazy or I'm right? You're right. You're right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you have a minute? No, I don't have a minute. What's up? Because they will use your time. Oh, I need to go to this place. Do you mind going with me? Oh, yeah, sure. I ain't got nothing going. That's what we say, right? I don't have anything going. These days, these days, even sleeping, and I don't mean excessive, but these days, even sleeping is needed. I don't know about you guys, right? But the way we live is so crazy now. When you step out there, it's not safe. Food. So sometimes the best place to be is in your <laughs> at home. You know, my nephew and I were talking on our way to church this morning, and he was working yesterday. I was like, man, I work all day and stuff. And, and I said, yeah, but it's good, right? Because if you're not working, chances are you are spending. So if you are working, you are earning. And that's the key. Yeah. Anyway. So I pray God that you allow the word of God to make, to have a room in your life. That you act on the word. Hallelujah. This morning we are going to do, uh, dedicate our brother Ose and the wife Varius baby. Hallelujah. You know, they are, they are part of us, but they live in Kansas. Right? And uh, there's something unique about them. You know, a year ago, right now, this month, they got married, right? Two years ago? Two years ago, this month, you go, wow. You see how our time flies. Yeah. But we are grateful. Uncle Norm, this thing is giving too much feed. Please. Uh, we, 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 we want to uh, bring this baby to dedicate a baby. As a church, we believe strongly in baby dedication. I will say this to all of us. We believe strongly in baby dedication. We believe that dedicating a child to God is biblical. 
and uh, dedicating a child to God has a value. Hallelujah. Jesus was taken to the temple to be, uh, to be dedicated to God. And that's what we're here to do. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask Mr. and Mrs. Bozu to come. And then, of course, the, uh, the grandparents and the godparents, if the godparents are also here. And everybody else, please stand to your feet for me, please. Ethan, I need microphones. I need two microphones. I need microphones. Oh, please. Uh, let me have this first, please. Yes, sir. Not for me. One for them. One for the uh, parents. Hallelujah. Please, you can, some of you can come here. Hallelujah. You guys need to actually face me, please, if you don't mind. Come this way, face me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can be behind them if that's perfectly fine. Uh, no, grandparents by the side. Uh, and then folks can be behind. Guys, come forward a little bit more so there's more room at the back for you. Yes. Uh, I have some questions that I'm going to be asking. Uh, amen. First of all, you want to introduce the, uh, uh, who are the godparents? The godparents are here? They, are not, they couldn't make it here. Okay. But we know grandparents, right? You want to introduce them? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> First, my parents, Daniel and Grace Kumi. Yes, I think it's, in, it's this mic here. Depend on the direction. Sorry about that. And we also have Varia's parents, Pastor. Is this something I'm doing? Or is it not me? Okay. So Varia's parents to my left, Osea's parents to my right. And the father is, uh, Osea's father is very busy. Yesterday, I saw him doing his kingship job at the funeral. He had to escort two kings into the, sun, into the, the venue. And this morning, he yesterday when I saw you, I was thinking to myself, so what time will you go to bed and get up and come? You, you, you need to get something. You, you, it's okay. You can grab it. Yes. I know, right? So, uh, congregation... For Oasis family, I mean the, fam uh, the family who came, you guys know or saying Barry already, right? Uh, for the Oasis family, as I said, Osei and Barry are part of us. Uh, they live in Kansas. Yeah, he's testing the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so they are part of us, and today we're here to dedicate their baby. It's a joy. Uh, two years ago, they married this month. Two years on the same month, uh, dedicating their baby. It was April, right? Look how beautiful and glorious the day is. And that's how his life is going to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, he agrees. So I am going to go over some things and then Ose and Varia, I'll ask you guys some questions that you answer. And then the and grandparents will answer along as well. Bring another microphone for. Say mom and dad also hold that. The question I asked of the parents, please feel free to answer as well. Um, Luke chapter 2 verse 52 states that, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, on physical growth, and in favor with God and humankind. God has entrusted you with a magnificent responsibility of guiding your child as he grows today. So my question for you is, do you lovingly accept this responsibility? If so, answer, we do. We do. We Please do. use the microphone so that people can hear you. We do. I will ask the question again, because we are before God. Do you lovingly accept this responsibility? If so, answer, yes, we do. Yes, we, yes, do. we do. Okay. God has given you the gift of life in this child. And you hold, you, this child you hold and love. 
Will you protect and nurture this gift? If so, answer, we will. We will. Okay. God expects you to teach a child through the example of a godly life. Will you strive to live lives consistent with God's word before your children? We will. We will. Okay. No, it's your child, but I know there'll be more coming. Yeah. So I'm plu I, I am being plural. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 through 7 says that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. So the question that I have for you, parents, is this. Will you dedicate yourself to teaching the ways of Christ to your child? If so, answer, we will. We will. All right. And now to the whole congregation. God does not call parents to work alone. Will you help these parents keep their commitments to guide the child as he grows in wisdom and stature in favor with God and with other people? If so, everyone say, yes, we will. Yes, we will. I didn't hear the people at the back. I said, if so, say, yes, we will. Yes, we will. Uh -huh. Will you help them protect and nurture the precious gift of life God has given them? If so, answer, yes, we will. Church family, will you also provide godly examples for this child to follow? If so, answer yes, we will. Yes, we will. Will you help these parents teach this child the ways of Christ? If so, answer we will. Yes, we will. All right. God had every word we said. Hallelujah. At this time, I ask for the child. Amen. He's going to go by Nate or he's going to stick with Nathaniel. Okay, I think no, that, right now, Nathaniel. What's up? What's up? You all right? Everybody, please stretch forth your hand towards us here. The name the parents have given this child. I didn't ask you to pray. I just said stretch your hands. He's bad, but you want to give him a water or we're good? He's okay. The name the parents have given this child is Nathaniel. Asuma, right? I got to Asuma Kumi Bonsu. Right? Nathaniel is a name that is familiar to me. And Asuma is the uh, various parents' name, last name, right? And Kusi Bonsu is uh, Kumi Bonsu is your parents' name. So Nathaniel is blessed in the sense that he's carrying both grandparents' names. What a joy and a blessing. Hallelujah. So please stretch forth your hands towards me. I'm going to pray. Before I pray, this morning, uh, Dr. Osuma, I was thinking that you are a man of God as I am, more than I am, as a matter of fact. So before I pray, if you don't mind, please pray a word over your grandson before I pray. Please. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Our dear Father, we come before you as your servants. And we are grateful for the gift of Nathaniel to us. And Father, as your servants, we pronounce a blessing upon him. Amen. We pray for your protection upon his life. Amen. We pray that he will grow in a healthy family Amen. and he will fulfill the purpose for which you have created him. Amen. We pray that, Father, you may help him to be a young man who knows you, Amen. an influential man Amen. for the rest of his life. Amen. We cancel every plan of the enemy. Mm -hmm. We cancel every scheme of the enemy against this child in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you that uh, your hand is upon him. Amen. And that hand will continue leading him all the way to heaven. Amen. We thank you, Father, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, those of you who are down, stretch your hands now. Please, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son and your daughter has brought the gift you gave them back to you to dedicate him to you. Ha. Father, to dedicate Nathaniel to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, Amen. we lift Nathaniel before you. Yes, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, the Lord, 
He'll be a sweet smelling aroma in your nostrils. A precious gift that Lord you will receive. I pray that your blessing will be upon him and overshadow him. I pray in Jesus name that he will grow from glory to glory. I pray that he will increase in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Everyone who set eyes upon him, may they favor his cause. I pray, Nathaniel, that you will never lack destiny helpers. Men with resources will locate you. People who have what you need will never be far from you. I declare over you that there will be nothing you need that will be in the hands of your enemies. I pray that God will make you stronger than your enemies in Jesus' name. I pray that God Almighty will shadow you with his grace. May you never lack mercy in Jesus' name. May God's grace abound towards you all the days of your life. Nathaniel, today, I separate you from the womb that bore you and I present you to God. In the name of Jesus, may you do the bidding of Jehovah. Ah, I pray in Jesus' name that you will find favor all the days of your life. You will stand to speak and you will speak to be heard in Jesus' name. All the days of your life, I decree and declare that wherever you travel to, divine protection is your portion. The Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in. I pray that the angel of the Lord assigned to you will always be around you in Jesus' name. I pray that they will never slumber nor sleep. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that you will never come to a place in life where you don't know what to do. May you be guided by God Almighty himself. Father, today we bring Nathaniel back to you. Mm. On your behalf, I receive him for you, Lord. That Nathaniel will do the will of God. For his sake, bless the parents. May they never lack what they need to look after him. May they never cry because of a need. Lord, I pray that when they lift up their voice and cry out for help, just as you remembered, my God, Ishmael, so I pray that you will look upon Nathaniel and provide everything they need. I leave the grandparents before you, the godparents, the aunties, the uncles, the cousins. I lift all of them before you, oh God. Father, I pray that for his sake, you will bless all of them. I pray that everyone who is in this place today will be blessed because they are here. Because Nathaniel is blessed. I pray in Jesus' name that whatever is associated with the name upon his life, I distill it from anything that is unpleasant. And I pray in Jesus' name, the Lord, the best of the name will be his portion. As his name is, so let him be. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I declare over you, son, that you are not ordinary. You will not be an ordinary child. You will be an extraordinary child. You will bring joy and delight to your parents. All the days of their lives, they will rejoice that they gave birth to you. I lift your father, father, I lift the father before you. The first son of his loins, his seed on this earth. Father, I pray that because he has chosen to dedicate his son to you, Lord, give him everything he needs to be a father to the son. I pray in Jesus' name that as he shapes his son, shapes his thinking. I leave the mother before you as, as she shapes his emotions. It will not be to manipulate, but to bring him up in the fear and in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. Nathaniel, I pray for you once again. That may you be a delight. May you stand out among your, con your contemporaries. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God Almighty will always watch over you. God will always provide your every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. May you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. May you be planted in the things of God all the days of your life. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. I give you the glory for this wonderful day. I give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The child I'm about to give back to you is not the child you gave us. Because you brought him to God. So as I turn him back to you, I'm turning back God's property to you. Please, handle with care. Handle with care. May God give you wisdom to raise him up. Because this is serious. As I turn him back to you, I say, I'm not turning back the boy you gave me. I'm 
turning back to you, God's child, because you dedicated him, and God has accepted the sacrifice. Hmm. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. At this house, this is certificate that shows that he was dedicated today, Nathaniel Asuma Komibunsu, with yours truly signature on it. Hang it somewhere. When he's growing up, let him know who he is. They said that here in America, we show gifts. Where I come from, we don't. But this is a Bible from Oasis. One of them is custom made with his name on it. Yeah. One of them, this one, am I supposed to do that? Let people see? That's America. This one is Bible stories. His first Bible stories. As I, I was looking at a few pages. I, I almost got caught up into it. And I'm like, this is not yours. Get your own one. <laughs> but really, really cool. Right? Bible story. Everybody learn first by stories, right? And then this is, when he grows enough to be a man, that's his Bible with his name. Custom made. Okay? We're going to fit all the names. That's why we have abbreviations in the middle. So we are not discriminating against anybody. So, please, let him know when he grows up that this is who he is. And grandparents also has something for him, right? So, V, I give the certificate to you because women protect. Men don't. Oh, this is. Oh, please present. Yes. Absolutely. From your grandparents. Amen. Hallelujah. You can turn and face them. Chief, do you mind sliding on thing for me for a minute? Yes, yes, yes. The man is in the house. Do your thing. Do your thing. Oh, oh says you are going to sing and he's going to this. <laughs> what I want to do? Okay. We are going to take our offering. He's, he's coming to sing. Oh, what is he going to do? Oh, do, oh your voice. We, he will come back to the house. He will come back to the house. Yeah. Hallelujah. But Osa is in the house. You know, we can't let him go without playing, right? Can you remember COVID, right? <laughs> Where's Kalia? You guys remember, right? When, yeah. They were asking me this morning, will Osa be in the house? Amen. Please stand to your feet. Uh, our giving information will be projected in a second. Um, for, for, you know, for accountability purposes, if you are giving uh, cash, we like that to be in an envelope. So if you need an envelope, please wave. We'll bring you one. Otherwise, we have all these electronic ways you can give. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. It's also Ryan Are you guys doing something for us? Whatever you guys play, Osa is fine. This is a pro. So whatever you want to play, he's fine. Yeah. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up. Some people came when they got here, we're already done. Father, bless this seed. Sanctify it and multiply it and let it be used for the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, many of these, when they got here, we're done with worship. So do something. 